Now Omicron BA2 is occurring about 4%, maybe 5% of cases now in the United States and is occurring throughout the United States. And in the UK, it's probably 5 or 6% of the cases. So we need to know a bit more about Omicron BA2 as opposed to Omicron BA1. And of course, as always, the Danes are way ahead of the game on this. So let's look at some, uh, some, some Danish data here. This is from the State Serum Institute in Denmark, which is the world leading genomic institute, basically. They have been ahead of the curve on this. Omicron SARS coronavirus 2 variants quickly become dominant, of course, significantly higher growth rate than Delta. Omicron variant is more transmissible than the Delta variant, all this we know. Now it's looking like BA2, which is the new form of the Omicron, or the one that's becoming more prevalent now, is more infectious than the BA1. So the secondary attack rate when one person in a household was uh, infected, how likely was it that other people in the household became infected? Then with BA1, it was 29% of people became infected in the household. With BA2, it was 39%. So that is showing a greater level of infectivity. Infectivity with uh, BA2 as opposed to BA1 which is why it is now BA2 is 100% of cases in Denmark. And it's shown reducing sensitivity to neutralising antibodies, but as we've seen, if you've had BA1, uh, you will be immune from BA2 to all practical purposes. Vaccine-induced infection, uh, in, vaccine-induced protection against infection is also clearly reduced for the Omicron compared to the Delta variant. We know, we know that. But we also know that uh, natural immunity gives very high levels of immunity, even in people that are unvaccinated. So if people have been unvaccinated but, and they've had the infection, but they're lucky enough not to get very sick and survive, then they have good levels of immunity and good levels of protection against reinfection and against hospitalisation and uh, deaths. And from the data from New York and California, they have a greater level of protection than people that are doubly vaccinated. Transmissibility is lower in fully vaccinated individuals, uh, even, lower, even lower in boosted vaccinated individuals compared to unvaccinated is the Danish data. So they're certainly seeing advantage from um, vaccine, of course, but that is not comparing it to those that are unvaccinated and have had the infection. Um, that data is not there and it's disappointing to see that that data is not being provided clearly uh, in any updates from the CDC or indeed by the Office of National Statistics in the UK. What we want to know, we want to compare the infection and the hospitalisation, the reinfection and the hospitalisation in people that are unvaccinated but have had the infection with people that are vaccinated because the early data is showing that the natural immunity is even better. Of course, if you've got both, if you've had the infection, then vaccinated or vaccinated and had the infection, you've also got very high levels of, uh, of immunity, this so-called hybrid immunity. So preliminary analysis, uh, 36 to 80 percent risk reduction in hospitalizations for the Omicron compared to Delta. Roughly what we're seeing in the in the UK uh, towards the higher end of that. Uh, with most studies reporting a, a re risk reduction of between 45 and 68 percent, again in the UK we're seeing round about that level of protection overall. Now the Omicron, it's important to remember uh, that there's actually several sub-lineages of Omicron. Now I think I've actually got a graphic here that shows this. It's really quite strange. So here we have Omicron here. We see it has not come from Delta. It's come from the original, this is the original wild type strain here. So Omicron's come straight from that. And where it's been all this time is hard to say. It could well that it's be that it's been in mice. So um, basically we don't know. And I haven't seen any updated uh, literature on that. But if we get it, we'll, we'll obviously cover it. So, but anyway, this shows there's different lineages of Omicron. And we can see that there from, from this, there's different different uh, different bits to it there different lineages of, of omicron um so there's these different ones uh ba11529 ba1 ba2 ba3 ba so th there's, th there's different lineages of it. you would expect this because it's constantly mutating uh, and these account for 97 percent of omicron cases worldwide now in 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 denmark in week 52 
um, the BA2 was 20%. And by week three, so that's what, three weeks later, BA2 was uh, 60%. So it's massively increased doubling time of about six or it might give us the doubling time about six or seven days in the Danish situation the doubling time in the UK seems to be quite a bit slower than that probably nearer 11 days to 12 days uh, an increase in the portion of BA2 and a decrease in the portion of BA1 so the BA2 being more transmissible is gradually replacing the BA1 BA2 is probably being beginning to take over in India, the Philippines and some European countries and Qatar also is now BA2 uh, dominant. So increasing growth potential, that's for sure. So if it's increasing growth potential, if it's becoming more prevalent, that can be caused by higher transmissibility and or the ability to escape uh, the uh, immune system compared to BA1. But we've now seen that the BA1, if you're infected with BA1, you are getting good protection against BA2. So that means the increase in prevalence of BA2 compared to BA1 is almost certainly due to the increased transmissibility. But of course, the vital question is, does it make us sicker? Current knowledge about severity, no difference in hospital admission risk was detected for BA1 and BA2 from 932 uh, hospitalised patients. The difference was, though, that BA1, the median age of hospitalisation, was 51, and uh, BA2, the median age of hospitalisation, was 40. But, of course, younger people do better than uh, older people in general, and this is carried on being true. So, younger people being hospitalised with BA2, but no difference in hospital admission risk and no difference in deaths were detected. So, if anything, the BA2 is a good thing, because it's increasing transmissibility, people are getting infected more quickly, the disease is remaining mild in the, in the majority of cases, and of course this is generating much higher levels of natural immunity, as long as hospitalizations can be kept down. Because everyone's going to be exposed to this anyway, it's quite reasonable to argue that this is a good thing. Although the authorities are still saying to minimise contacts if we have the infection. Um, but... Um, that's just the way the way I see it. Omicron is generating huge amounts of natural uh, immunity. The other question I am asked quite a bit is that if BA2 is more transmissible than BA1, why didn't we have the BA2 first? Uh, why wasn't the BA2 there from the beginning? Why didn't it out and compete BA1 to begin with? And the answer is it wasn't there. So the BA1 came along and started multiplying first and re thankfully, so thankfully, replaced the Delta. And now the, the BA2 has come along and starting to replace the BA1. Had the BA2 been there at the beginning, it would have become the more prevalent strain straight away. So the BA1 was there first, and this is called founder effect. And the analogy I've used before, it's a bit like saying, what, why was there no white European people uh, in Australia a thousand years before Christ? And the answer is because they, they hadn't arrived there yet, so they couldn't reproduce. It was the indigenous Australians that were there, therefore they were the ones that were populating it. And then when white people came, they started reproducing there as well. It's exactly the same as that. Well known in evolution, it's called founder effect. But now the BA2 is taking over. So I'm expecting the main endemic virus the main endemic SARS coronavirus 2 to be Omicron BA2, probably for some time to come. Thank you for watching.